A good day, ladies and gentlemen. It is another day that the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice and be glad in Him. Today, we are going into another series. We have talked about three different series. One, we have the bedrock of relationship part one and two. And after that, we came to the other part, which talks about why most relationships fail. Why are we going through this, this different series of teaching so far? It's as a result of, we are seeing a lot of marriages hitting the rock. We are seeing a lot of relationship breaking up. People even find it as a thing of joy to break a relationship than to break a marriage. And uh, they are saying a broken relationship is better than a broken marriage. The question is how many are you going to keep on breaking and breaking and breaking and breaking, thereby looking for Mr. Right? But from what we have been going through so far, we are trying to make everybody understand that there is no, there's nothing like Mr. Right. It is the purpose that generates the Mr. Right. So I'm here to make you understand that relationship is the bedrock of marriage and the marriage so far is God's institution. So today we are going to be discussing the true concept of marriage. The true concept of marriage. That is going to be a major discussion today. What is the main plan of marriage? Why did God establish marriage? And please sit tight, don't go yet. Sit at least, please share this video. You can call your partner listening to this video. You can call your colleagues listening to this video. You can call your friends listening to this video because it's going to be a blessing to you. Call them, sit down, just listen to it. It will be of help to the marriage you are planning to go into. You can go and watch the, uh, the bedrock of relationship part one and two and why most relationships fail so that you will know how to build a good relationship and thereby leading it to marriage. Sit up and be back very soon. God bless you. Okay, welcome back. Today we are going to be talking on the true concept of marriage. And we are going to be looking at it from the Word of God. Everything we are going to see here, we are going to relate it from the Bible. Now we are going to read three different scriptures from the Bible. From there, we'll be able to understand what is the main concept, what is the major plan that makes God to establish marriage and to make it an institution on this planet Earth. One thing you must know, there is no marriage in heaven. Marriage ends on Earth here. But one thing I want to tell you is that despite there is no marriage in heaven, marriage is going to stop some people from entering heaven because the way we are going to approach it will determine if it's going to be for us or it's going to be against us so therefore you must understand the institution of god before you start going into it so we are going to be reading three different scriptures we are going to pick one from genesis we are going to pick one from Matthew. I'm going to pick another one from the book of Ephesians. These three places we are going to be considering what and how God established marriage. What was the major purpose of him establishing it? And we are going to look into it, the role that we are made to take in a marriage. This reading is going to be taken from Genesis chapter 2 from verse 23 to 24. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 23 to 24. I read in Jesus' name. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken at the of man. 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and he shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Now the place I just read right now is Genesis chapter 2, 23 and 24. Now the next one we are going to read again is 
We are going to read Matthew chapter 19, 5 and 6. I read in Jesus' name. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and he shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall and they twain shall be one flesh. Therefore, they are no more twin, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. Now the two scriptures we just read, the Genesis chapter 2 from verse 23 to 24, and 19, 19, 5 and 6, speaks of the same thing. One thing is that marriage is not what you jump into. Marriage is something that you take a proper self decision. You make because it's an institution that the devil will always fight against. He fought against the one of Adam and Eve. Don't think that your own will be exempted. Now, like what I said, every relationship is an introduction to marriage. That is why I tagged it the bedrock. Is an introduction to marriage. So when you are coming into marriage, every decision has to be made while you are just in a mere relationship. Now, from the place we read, that Genesis chapter 2, the Bible says, for this reason, a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. While they were coming together, the man and the woman, they were still yet on, on with their father. They were still with their uh, different families. They were still staying with them. The man was still with his parents. The woman was still with her parents. So when it's not becoming marriage, they finally leave both parents apart. They have to leave both parents. Leave father, leave mother. The man will leave his mother and father. The woman will leave her mother and father and come together and establish what? Establish a marriage. What is marriage? Marriage is a legal union of a relationship between a man and a woman. From the two places we read, the man has to leave his, his, his people and look his wife. Both of them shall become one flesh. Now, not one flesh in physicality, one flesh in thought, one flesh in mind, one flesh in, in, in agreement. Anything they say, if they say yes, their yes is yes. Nobody betray each other. That is the place of two of them coming together and becoming one flesh. Not in the flesh of physicality, no flesh of thought, flesh of mind, flesh of agreement, the uh, 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 flesh of reasonings. Now, when both parties come together, they agree in their closet, that is what they present to the public. Nobody goes back. That is why a third party is not made to come in. Now, remember, when God was giving them this institution, the devil has not deceived them. So when you are coming to establish a marriage, you should have it at the back of your mind that you are coming to encounter a different thing entirely, which is different from a relationship. When you are in a relationship, the devil doesn't fight a relationship. Don't think, hey, we, are, we understand that, say, well, we are together. Yes, the devil doesn't fight a relationship. The devil is much more involved when it becomes a marriage. Relationship is, is not an institution before God. Marriage is an institution before God. So when you are coming in, be much ready. Be much ready that you are coming to encounter a deeper experience that you have never had before. It's a different thing entirely. Because the devil will look for every means to make sure that he breaks that, he breaks that marriage. So, every, like what I said in my previous video, every decision 
is not made in the altar. It's made in the relationship. Before you plan of turning it into marriage. Every decision is made not in the altar where the marriage is being legalized, where the relationship is being legalized. No. Every decision is made in what? In a, in a relationship. When you, when you guys are in a relationship. So when the relationship, the decision has been well concrete, an agreement has been well made due to the three purposes why both of you came together. You should be able to know that fine, we cannot go into the marriage. The Bible says the man should leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife. Now, Adam was able to recognize that this is the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh. It was not a beauty that Ab Adam saw. It was not the woman's beauty that Adam saw. It was not the woman's shape. It was not the woman's uh, 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 complexion. It was not the woman's height. It was not the woman's uh, uh, eyes. No. It was what God has planted in them, which resulted into bringing out a definite purpose. When Adam saw Eve, Adam said, this is the bone of my bone. This is the flesh of my flesh. For she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. From that, the purpose was defined. Now, what is the major plan what is the major purpose? God bringing two people together to form an institution called marriage. Now, number one, why God established marriage, one, is to be there for each other. You are there for me and I'm there for you. That is the purpose. Adam was alone. When uh, uh, Eve came in, they were, they were there for each other. They were backing each other. That was why when Eve ate the fruit, Adam did not resist. Adam as well ate of it. But in major cases, if anyone is going astray, the other one is there to, to correct. An institution, you have to go with study, you have to understand each other, you have to know, you have to understand what is at stake at a particular time. You have to be there for each other. If one is falling, the other one has to be there to raise up. So the major person who is the target is the man why the other one is there to back up, is there to help, is there to assist. So when God created both parties, God created them for a reason. Number one reason is for them to be there for each other. You are there for me and I'm there for you. When I'm weak, you are there to strengthen me. When I'm down, you are there to pick me up. When I broke, you are there to assist me. That is why God said, let's make, make man a help me and the woman has to come in. So the purpose of marriage is for you to be there for me and I'm there for you. Both parties, you protect each other, you are there for each other. Now, what is the number two plan God has in mind? What is the number two plan why God established marriage? Number two plan why God established marriage is for both parties to erect another generation. Erecting another generation. Because God said, Adam and Eve should multiply. So the purpose is one, they should bring out another kind. They bring out their own kind that will live after they are gone. That will continue their good work. That will continue from where they stop. So another purpose of marriage is to what? Is to, is to erect a generation. Like what I explained in the previous video, each relationship leads to another generation, which means each marriage leads to another generation. 
the marriage is to erect a generation. So the, the, the coming together of both parties is to erect another generation. So that is another concept. Why God established marriage? He established marriage to erect another generation. That is where conception has to come in. That was the reason why he told Adam that they should reproduce. They should, they should reproduce and uh, fill the earth with their kinds. Now, now, what is the third reason why God established marriage? According to what he told Adam, he said, replenish the earth, beautify the earth for generations yet unborn to enjoy from. Generations should enjoy from what you are doing, not just gathering it for your personal self after you consume, maybe after you have gone out of this earth, the next thing you see, the next generation you erected, begins to struggle for it. No. The, what you are doing, God expects you that you should do it in a way that your children's children will enjoy from it. Not the type we are doing today, we just, uh, 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 we find ourselves in whatever we are doing, that we just keep us, eat, 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 take care of us, and the next generation has to struggle from where we continue. But no. God expects that every marriage should establish something that your children children will enjoy make the earth a comfortable place for your children make it a good place before you pass out make it a good place before you depart this earth these are the three major reasons why god established this union he made it number one he made it so that one both parties should be of comfort be there for each other two purpose of reproduction Three purpose of uh, establishment. Establish it. Let there be an establishment that your generation will eat from, your generation of born will enjoy from. Do uh, you, 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 you guys are made to bring out something, a handwork, an establishment that generation yet unborn will enjoy from. Today you can see we are enjoying what a lot of people have established. Today we enjoy light which was uh, established by somebody. We are enjoying uh, 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 cars, we are enjoying uh, 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 different kinds of things, things, appliances you are enjoying today. We are all, all produced by somebody. The person who produces it, many of them are there, but yet we are enjoying We should be able to try to understand that before you come together, you should have this three concept. When you come together, you know that these are the three things God expects from you. The man who has a handwork, God has given a handwork, the woman comes in to help in that handwork. From the process of helping in that handwork, before you see, conception comes in. After conception, before you see that handwork, we bring out something that will lead to generational sustenance. It will be able to sustain the next generation. So God expects us to take care of this earth through whatever means we are doing so that the, so that the next generation will enjoy from it. Like what I said, we are enjoying the, the handwork of a lot of people. Many of them are dead. If fact, a lot of them are dead. Those who establish life, those who establish uh, the appliances we are enjoying, those who establish plane, those who establish a lot of things, those who, who brought about the phone we are using today, a lot of them are no longer in existence. But here we are today, we are enjoying it. This was what God expects us to do. That was why he said, replenish the earth. Adam replenish this earth so that man can enjoy it. So when you guys are coming together to form an institution, to establish an institution which was on day from heaven. These three things should be your watchword. These three things should be part of you. Now, these three things is the major purpose why God brought man and a woman together. God expects us to maintain these three things. One, we should be there for each other. Two, reproduce. Number three, we are made to replenish the earth so that the next generation can enjoy from it. These three things give us 
the major concept of marriage. These are the major plans of marriage. In our next video, we are going to be talking about the conduct of both parties in the marriage. God bless you. I will see you in the next video. Please don't forget, try, subscribe to my channel. Share this video. I've always encouraged that you should share the video. This is not an entertainment. This is what is going to help you generation to come. I'm not trying to make you to laugh. If you want to laugh, there are other videos I put there that can make you to laugh. But what I'm teaching you here, the award is going to help you in generation to come. So please share this video, subscribe to this channel, and please, I beg of you, don't watch this video. Come on, let's put our hands together.